Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So this is a chart of the US dollar Mexican peso, and you can see we're reaching back up towards that uh, 20 price. The, the bulk of this area that we see here in the recent rally, this is what I will call the Trump rally. It started right about in here, roughly the beginning of the year. As Trump's candidacy became more serious, we see uh, more loss in the value of the Mexican peso. That's the that's the typical analysis that most people give this. But you know we've had some moves in the past with the financial crisis there, uh, where the peso really lost a lot of value as well. And of course the beginning of this breakout was all the way back here. So uh, this is one indicator that seems to say that something as big, big is coming could be a Trump victory. That's another thing that's being predicted by Cliff High. We're going to spend the rest of the time covering him. But before we do, I want to look at the Bitcoin chart. Now, this is the move in the Chinese yuan. You can see the dollar equivalent price now is $711 per Bitcoin. That's, uh, that's a pretty big move. We're getting back to that key price around 5000 in the Chinese yuan. You can see that we're trying to build a pennant to break out above this old high that we got back in the summer uh, of the let's see that was actually no that was back in May and uh, this is also something that Cliff High had predicted he actually I think he predicted this move very close to the day and I think he was wrong though saying that silver was going to follow it up it did a little bit but uh, nothing like what we're seeing here in Bitcoin another chart I'm going to pull up real quick here is one that I pointed out earlier the Chinese Yuan and the move that we're having there which kind of closely mirrors the move we're having in Bitcoin that I pointed out before so you can see that breakout that's when Bitcoin started to break out was right here and and uh, the move in the Yuan is continuing uh, so those two are kind of tied at the hip and uh, it, they're all forecasting something big is coming. So I'm going to spend the rest of the time with the interview of Cliff High talking about gold and silver, and then I want to talk a little bit about this interview. I want to come back. Uh, I just want to finish up on gold and silver, and that's a great sure. discussion, and I don't want to minimize that at all. Uh, no, so, no. so we're going to have big inflation, huge inflation. What about gold? Does gold go to, I see you mentioned 25000 an ounce. Jim yeah. Sinclair mentioned 50000 an ounce, and that might seem cheap, according to his partner and buddy and a business partner, uh, Bill Holter. He says, who's, these are two smart guys. They know all about the markets, yeah. economy, gold, silver. He says fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 an ounce may seem cheap for gold, and silver may be $1,000 an ounce. Could you talk a little bit about gold, inflation, and silver? Sure. The uh, the issue is that they uh, you have a lot of people running around saying that there's not enough gold. And in a one way, that's true. Uh, if all of the gold that was mined was handed out, there would not be enough for one ounce per person on the planet. And so if we're going to use it as a medium of exchange, we've got to do something there. It's got to be um, uh, split up into finer quantities and so on, which means it's more valuable. And we're at a situation where the inflation rate is totally unknown on the planet. We know it's in the mega quadrillions as they print uh digits all the time, but we have no real understanding uh, because no one has actually been forthcoming with how much the central banks have uh, uh, polluted the, the money stream with in just the past couple of years. It is estimated, though, that you would need gold uh, 125 an ounce if it were to back uh, the SDRs. If that were the case, uh, then wait, you need to have, uh, Let me get this right. Gold at 100, 100, 125. 120, 125,000. Yeah, oh, hundred twenty. You said one hundred twenty-five. I thought, who? Oh, sorry. One hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars an ounce. Stop. So to back all the SDRs, you need gold at one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars an ounce. Is that what I heard you say? That's what I'm saying. The reason that that's the case is because in order to have the velocity of money uh, required to uh, have a, a growing civilization, you need that level of gold. To support the SDRs that they're trying, going to try and fob off on us as the impetus to go ahead and create new activity. From the from the uh, viewpoint of the officialdom, 
they really don't care what they offer us. It's very much like the old Soviet Union where uh, the, the workers pretended to work and the bosses pretended to pay them. They gave you currency in the old Soviet Union, but you had nothing to buy. We've got sort of the reverse situation here where they want us to continue to buy and, and the powers that be know that gold and silver are very valuable, but if they can keep us all working at this fren uh, frenetic and frantic pace working for paper, so much the better because they can produce as much of the paper as they want. So here's their situation. Our data sets talk about hyperinflation. It talks about hyperinflation as a result of a major deflationary bend in the, in the, in the financial infrastructure that occurs in late November and all through December and into January and February. And then we get a, um, uh, an impact on the asset bubbles over February and March, such that by summer, the central banks are pulling each other's hair out in desperation as they're trying to churn up as much digital money as they can, such that we then have a forecast of a Dow indices at 125,000 value. That forecast originally showed up maybe two years ago. So, uh, the, so, wait, 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 so the, the Dow would be uh, 100, not, would be not, uh, what, 18,000, whatever it is now. Correct. The Dow be would 100, be 125,000, it would go up five, six fold. And then right. what would happen, to, and gold would be 125,000, could be, that's what you're right. saying. Correct. What about because silver? Silver different. could be 3,000 an ounce, 10,000 an ounce. I, I don't well, know. Yeah, 10,000 is much more likely, but it's going to be a strategic metal. So um, I don't know that a lot of countries will even allow you to trade the stuff thereafter. We're going to get into a really uh, strange time uh, that will be quite odd because places like uh, there will be places with no national government that's effective, much as we have sp uh, in Spain at the moment. In those places, you're going to get free markets opening up and real price discovery. And so, but these will be relatively isolated from the official dumb view of what price discovery is. Bear in mind, you right now think that gold has a particular value, not because that's what the uh, price discovery has told you, but rather that's what the official dumb has told you. In this country, gold has that value because COMEX sets that price. And that's the um, price, but that's not the real cost. The real cost in this is, is uh, rippling out and destroying the financial system because we have no sound money backing anything. And basically, the officialdom, the powers that be, simply want us all to keep believing in the illusion that they've created, and all good things can keep going on and on and on. Do we, get to, a is, point, do we get to a point where it just crashes, the, the stock market crashes? Before we get that 125,000 uh, Dow, do we get a 5,000 Dow before it goes back up? I mean, do they, does it crash and then they freak out and start printing money like crazy? Is, that, is, is it a V chart? Uh, I don't, okay, I don't get any kind of a chart stuff on our data set. So again, bear in mind, we do this linguistically. And so it's sort of like we get presented with headlines and that's the best I can do. I can't really, you know, open up an article and drill down in it. Do you get a we headline where it says it crashes and then a headline where it says later on it skyrockets? We get the headline that says it skyrockets. We don't have one that says it crashes, but we do have at that time uh, headlines that say gold goes no offer and silver is not to be found anywhere. At that same time, we have lots of little tiny headlines all around, which is like uh, for most of 2017, 18, and 19, and these little tiny headlines all around would be discussing like regional situations where, oh, hey, it's just hit the news that this guy just bought a Bentley and he paid the fellow uh, two ounces of gold and 10 ounces of silver and bought a brand new Bentley. Uh, another guy, you know, uh, get a headline that, oh, well, Here's a fellow that decided that, uh, you know, he wanted to trade some of his silver. And so he traded nine or 10 ounces of silver and got himself a 75 foot um, uh, a motorboat on a lake in Tennessee. Uh, these kind of um, little tiny data sets form the, the immediacy and the short term data. So we get a picture of uh, price discovery breaking out uh, against the wishes of a failing officialdom. And the failing part is quite clear at that stage. We've had this since, oh, 1999. Uh, all kinds of stuff about the dollar uh, basically being uh, totally rejected and, and the political structure fracturing and uh, uh, problems here. The issue that we have is very complicated, very complicated. And that is, well, it's so complicated that many people are not even aware of who the players are in an economic collapse of the United States. We have the parasites we have to deal with. Bear in mind those parasites, as you just said, sucked away nine trillion here recently. 
they need that money for something. That's according to the that is according to the government too. That's not that's not some right. fantasy number. That's according to the inspector general or you know official number. So right, and I think that that money actually goes over to a room somewhere, and you open up a door and you set it on a table in there, and there's just only another door in that room, and you shut your door, and the other door opens up, and then the the what we call the breakaway civilization. Those individuals for the past 60, 70 years that have been part of the secrecy effort and reverse engineering UFOs. And so stuff. we're not going to go into the breakaway civilization and all that controversial stuff. But that's the basic scenario that we're getting from the web bot. Now, how much validity does this have? How much importance do you uh, attach to this? Well, he was really accurate in his Bitcoin price appreciation prediction. Uh, I just don't completely understand how you can have what he mentioned, individual headlines if coming from the future. I, I don't really understand how that can work. If, if any of you understand that, uh, please explain it to me. I'm also interested in your opinion on Cliff High, what you think of his work. Uh, I'm definitely up in the air about it. Uh, I mean, it makes sense in the sense that, you know, you could have the elites talking about what they plan to do, and they could be hinting ahead of time what they plan to do. I guess that's possible. Uh, I just, there's something that seems kind of fishy about it. So, he's definitely forecasting, it seems to be a hyperinflation. If you noticed in the discussion, he mentioned 125,000 Dow price with 125,000 gold price. So that's actually the Dow gold ratio going to a one to one, which a lot of people have predicted that's going to come about at some point in time. Uh, and then for the price of silver, I think he mentioned 10,000 an ounce being one of them. Uh, the other story he gave anecdotally, someone buying uh, a yacht with 10 ounces of silver, that seems really extreme. But then again, supposedly, it's going to go no offer. So that's the analysis from Cliff High. Very interesting stuff. We're heading into the election. He's predicting a landslide by Donald Trump that will just blow out everything and, and then a crash that starts at that point. So what do you think? And we'll talk to you next time.